Actually, it'll hold your, hold your hold necklace. Oh, it should go in between here. On yeah, there. there you go. So we're doing Rescue Regret. We're talking about the dogs who uh, were brought into the homes through COVID-19 and a lot of people are having trouble with the dog because people are having the realities of going back to work and now we have to uh, give people some instructions on how to better their lives with their new canine companions without giving them back. Okay, so in the beginning you're just going to start off with the channel of who you are, your company, and what you do. Hey guys, I'm Josh Leverett, owner of California Canine Solutions, aka Cali Canine, where we specialize in obedience, socialization, behavior modification, problem solving techniques for all breeds. Perfect. So today I'll be working with Angie and her dog Lewis. <laughs> And I understand that Lewis is a little feisty, excitable, you know, very high energy dog. My plan is, is to assess where he is and his temperament, and from there, let's get him motivated and get him on with the train. So now I'm going to shoot some B-roll. Yes. Okay. So Jeff, you yes. want to stand right here in between these items? Today, in order to work with Lewis, I brought along all my training tools. Number one is going to be your six foot leash. Number two, high value treats. But most importantly, after we get him engaged, we're gonna start working on our proofing. And in our proofing, we have to have things like our place command. We're gonna to have to have different distractions to, in order to get him desensitized to different things that Lewis might see every day. Hey, you gotta keep the J's clean. <laughs> Everything's going good, man. We just, uh... You know, I'm about to go into the studio and uh, see what Lewis is all about because I've never met the dog ever. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm Joss. I'm Angie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Joss. All right. So, who we have here? This is little Lewis. All right. Lewis um, but I need your help badly. Because Angie okay. We go on walks. All right. And he sees a bicycle go by and he just freaks out. You know, okay. or even if he sees people or other animals, he'll bark, he'll want to run, you know, take okay. control. So most of that comes from fear. And the thing is, dogs will either fight or flight. And certain dogs choose to avoid by flighting, or some of them will take matters in their own hands and try to be reactive. So I think it's very important for me to see how Lewis acts on his own, so we'll take him outside. <laughs> I see what's going on. And the reality is, he just needs some socialization and a little bit of structure. So I want to take him for an hour, work with him, and then bring him back to you and see how he does for you. Sounds good to me. He is all yours. All right. Sounds good. Something. Lewis ran over to me, uh, you know, smelling certain things because I had some treats from my other dog. He's very sociable and that's always a good thing. That's a great place to start. First I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull out these treats and show them what I have, build value for it, and make them chase because the fun's in the chase. You can see he's very food motivated and this is awesome. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to charge the marker. And charging the marker means I'm going to create value in the word break and that's going to be the release marker. So when I say break, he'll get a reward. Break. Oh. Break. Good. So I have the leash on Lewis, and by having the leash is going to give me some leverage. I'll be able to kind of give him some zones so he won't be able to run all over the place. So now that he's pretty motivated, I'm just going to lure him. And next, I'm going to go ahead and introduce my place marker. Yeah, good job, boy. Good job, boy. Good place. Now I'm going to reward that place marker. Good place. And I'm going to make it very comfortable and I'm just going to keep rewarding him right here on the place. Break. And what I did just now was just got him used to the, got him used to the place. But because we hung out on that place and had a good time, he's a lot more free to go up there. Place. Good job. So you see everything comes step by step. As you create comfort, the dog will trust. Good. Good place. Sit. Good sit. And I'm training with a very low distracting environment because I don't want to have to compete with different motivators at this time because I'm trying to teach Lewis what I need to teach him and it's a lot easier to learn with no distractions. And place, sit, good, okay? Now that I've established a sit, I want to build some, did some duration in the sit. So I'm going to stand up and away from him, less treats involved. And I'm going to create a little bit of distance now. Good, Lewis, good. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and incorporate some distractions. When we're dog training, we don't like to just go from inside with no distraction to outside where there's millions of distractions. We like to incorporate it gradually and get the dog desensitized to the distractions. I have my training partner, Isaiah, here. So he's gonna come with a couple different distractions. We'll start with something like. So all I'm gonna do is have Zay come by, a little, make a little noise with that chatter stick. Nothing too crazy, good. Good. And it's very important that I just support Lewis and let him know, oh, no big deal, buddy. Now we're gonna go ahead and go to another one. We'll go ahead and incorporate the skateboard. So first, he'll just come by with a light roll. Good, all right. Now Zay's gonna ride by, nice and easy. Good job, buddy. All right, bring up the intensity. Nice, And if our dogs get nervous, sometimes it's good to get close to them, you know? When we're nervous, sometimes we need a hug too, right? So if the dog is feel like it's a little bit too much stress, you can just praise them and really support them. All right, so we've done our distractions inside, so now let's take them outside. Hi, how'd it go? We're fantastic, he's such a fast learner, he's so motivated, and he just really showed out. So I'm really excited to show you how he's able to adjust to new things. Fox. Good. We worked on several different distractions. We're just going to give an example with the bike since that was one of the main ones. Let's go ahead and have a bike go by. Good. Now what I'm going to do is hold him true to his obedience that we've established. So, you know, sit means sit. It means not bark at bikes. Right? So as he's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and just keep him engaged. Sit. Good. Now you see he's you know, a little bit reactive. We see a big difference from what we had, right? Yes. Oh my gosh. Right? Now this next time, we'll just have him come right next to him. Good. And the fact that he's eating shows that he's really not stressed off the bike because dogs stop eating when they're stressed. So that was the time I'm going to do with the treats. Now I'm going to have him come by one more time with just praise and pet. Okay. And the reality is he's really just nervous. Good job. Good sit. Good sit. Yeah. Good job, buddy. So first we establish obedience in the learning phase with no distractions. Then we go into the proofing phase with distractions that we introduce gradually in a superficial environment. And then the next step is to take it out and about into the real world. So we don't just try to go from zero to 100. We go zero to 10, and then to 20, and then 30, 40. We want to set our dogs up for success. That really is so impressive. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I can't believe what you just did with him. Well, that was only in one hour, so you ain't seen nothing yet. I can't wait for more. <laughs> Let's do this. All right. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Right. No. Normally, sure. so no. place. Sit. Good job. Oh my God. I Good can't job. Do this. I really do. Normally, if he saw a dog like Slash, right. he'd be going crazy. Good Great. boy. Oh my God. Good boy. Let's say hi. Good job, buddy. Box. Sit. Slash. Here. Wow. Slash. Plus. Good job, buddy. So you just keep petting. You just keep with support, sure. right? Because we're pretty sure. I said, use an example. You got to walk down Skid Row by yourself or Tenderloin District. It's better to have some macho person with its, uh, you know, a, 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 a set of nunchucks and a sword, and you know, know you're going to be safe. You know, so that's you have to be the knight in shining, shining armor for your dog. I cannot believe how much Lewis has changed. I, I can't believe he's sitting here this close to Slash right now and not having his teeth out, crawling, barking, going crazy. This is amazing. This improvement in such a short of time really gives me a lot of hope. Well, it's good, and I'm really glad it is. And then this is the thing that all dogs can be changed like this. If you're patient, any dog can be changed. With more dog training, this dog has infinite potential. I mean, this is just cracking the surface on what this dog is capable of doing. So I think it's very important that you get consistent, learn how to be a, a great pack leader, learn how to keep your dog engaged and motivated, and you'll be able to take this dog anywhere. You've definitely inspired me. I can see the difference, and I can't wait to keep working with him. Thanks so much, You're very Dad. welcome. You're very welcome. Look forward to working with you some more.